video today is about repenting. Um, there's a lot of Christians that don't understand um, that we should still be repenting of our sin. Just because we're, we're saved um, by the grace of God doesn't mean that we have an excuse to sin and to stay in that sin. We've got the Holy Spirit living with inside of us, the God, God's Spirit living in us. Um, it, it boggles my mind to think that people think they can't stop sinning or that they're not supposed to stop sinning or that God's just going to overlook their sin. Well, you guys, have you, you know, and I'm basically talking to um, a few of my new believer friends. They, they really don't understand what repenting is. And then I'm talking to the church that is teaching the false doctrine and telling everyone if they say a prayer, um, then that's it. You know, they don't have to carry a cross every day. They don't have to repent of their sins. The, that couldn't be any further from, from the truth. Um, it's, it's so much in, Jesus says so many times in God's word that when you stop, pen, uh, stop sinning to repent and sin no more. There's so many um, events that happened in the Bible where Jesus healed someone and he always said, go and sin no more. And you guys, even in, um, let's see. Okay, um, Galatians 5.25 says, If we live in the Spirit, then let us also walk in the Spirit. Um, you know, the more that we're obedient to God and that we obey Him, the more spiritual our walk becomes with Him. And He begins to let us see with His eyes and hear with His ears. And then we begin to see the sin in our life and we feel guilty and then um, the Holy Spirit will enable us to get strength to walk away from that sin. We have no, absolutely no excuse to stay in sin. Those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, if, they, if you make Jesus your Lord of your life, then that means that you're going to obey God's word and that you understand that the Holy Spirit is one who enables you to walk away from sin. You know, it's, it's amazing to me to, um, you know, and, and I'm guilty of this too, but, you know, there was a time when I did go to the bars and stuff, and I thought I was still, you know, walking with Jesus. I thought, yeah, I can do this, I can do that, but, you know, and I thought it was a um, get-out-of-jail-free card. But you guys, it's not. Um, just let me give you some examples here. Um, in John 5.14, um, Jesus is talking to... Um, some people here about sinning. Afterwards, Jesus, okay, he healed a man. Um, he was, this man was crippled. He, I, I believe he was born crippled. I'm not really sure. I'll have to go back and read that. Maybe you guys can let me know for sure. But um, anyways, he, he was on his mat and Jesus told him to get up and walk. And later on, um, Jesus found him. And then he said, um, af okay, afterward, Jesus find him in the temple and said unto him, behold, Thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Okay, you guys, if we know that something's a sin and we decide to stay in that sin, um, I that, that's a very scary thing. I would not want to see what God would do. I was in that position, you guys. I was sinning and I knew that it was wrong and I could feel the separation between God. And I, and I had made up that separation because I choose, I was choosing to stay in that sin. But until I fully, you know, came to God um, in humility and, you know, uh, humbled myself before him and admitted that I was done with that sin. And I asked him to take it out of my life. And, you know, he did. Um, he does that with all of my sins. Uh, there comes a point where you have to tell him that you need him to take that sin out of your life because we don't have that willpower. Um, we, we don't have that without the Holy Spirit, um, without him guiding us. Also, um, in John 8, 11, again, he, uh, 
he heals a woman. Okay, this is the woman who, no, I'm sorry, he doesn't heal her. Um, This is the woman who was um, being accused of uh, adultery, and they wanted to stone her to death. Well, um, Jesus said, let he who, who was without sin cast the first stone. And, you know, of course, everyone just kind of stopped, and they looked at themselves, and they walked away. They dropped their stones, and they walked away, because they know that each each one of them had sinned before. Um, so Jesus said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So does that give her a right to go and commit adultery after what he just told her? No. He pointed out that it was sin. And he told her to sin no more. Um, there's so many... There's so many events that happened in the Bible where Jesus healed someone um, and he told them to sin no more. Uh, okay, it's so obvious, you guys, um, that the Lord wants to chisel out the bad stuff and put his desires in us. If we claim to follow God and we're out there doing, you know, who knows what, what people that don't believe in God or that don't have him as their Lord and Savior, if we're with them, doing the same things that they are, then we're no better than they are. Um, we're still heathens if we're still continuing in sin that we know is wrong. And we cannot sit here and tell people that if they say a prayer, then that's it. Because that is not true. Once saved, always saved is a complete lie. It's a walk of salvation. It is, it's a, um, it's a battle. <laughs> I mean, Christians do not have an easy time. This is not, I mean, yes, it's a, it's a gift of grace from God. It's, it's a gift. But we have to turn away from our fleshly desires. We have to shed our skin and put on the Christ, you know. We have to um, abide in him and, and uh, he abides in us and we have a relationship with him and we completely trust in the Lord to change us from within and that will make us walk away from sin and our desires will be replaced with his. Um, it just, it boggles my mind that Christians say, you know, oh yeah, our sins are forgiven. Yes, they're forgiven and they're forgotten. They are, you know, once we repent of them. Um, okay, so, oh man, there's just, there's, there's so many, um, scriptures on this. I, I don't understand why churches are out there, they're not teach. they're teaching half truth. Um. I, I, I really, I don't understand that. Um, anyways, I, ugh. okay, so like in uh, Luke 12, 5 says, I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Um, you guys can read about Jesus calls to the people to repent in Luke 13, okay? Read that whole chapter. Um, it goes, it's like 1 through 30, 30 or so. Um, yeah, and he teaches about the kingdom of God in there and everything. You guys, read that whole chapter, and you will see that the Lord himself tells us to stop sinning. Um, you guys, and it's also like this, uh, Luke 6, 46, um, Jesus teaches about those who build houses on rock and sand. Okay, so the foundation of Christ is rock. That's our foundation. Once you decide to accept him as your Lord and Savior, you're picking up your cross, okay? You're putting your trust in the Lord every day, not just on Sundays, not just on days that you feel like it, on days where you, every day, every day you put your trust in the Lord, and he will guide you and lead you and teach you, okay? But if we build our houses on sand, which means in our own way of thinking, we're sure to fail. If we do not have Christ in our life, our foundation is nothing but sand, and it's worthless. Um, eventually, it's, you know, we'll, we'll perish, we'll wither away, because we don't have the truth um, to stand on. Um, but if you have the Lord in your life, then you do have truth to stand on. So that's, that's something to be joyous about, and um, to be hopeful about. And, you know, you guys, it's not easy to stop sinning. Um, yeah, we're going to fall. But Jesus is right there to pick us up. It's when we fall is when Satan comes in there and tries to take advantage of our weakness in that time. And that's why we have to be quick to repent and stand up again. Because we know that the Lord is going to bring us through that.